Someone told a story of an 1800s mental hospital that caught on fire in England. Of course, the story's probably been twisted and turned, but the summary of it was um, they're trying to evacuate this place pre-elevator, pre-fire sprinkler days, and, and, uh, but one of the people in the hospital said they're out to get us hide, and the hospital was filled with people who were hiding under beds, hiding into closets, and people would say, leave, leave, There's a, the building's on fire. They were hiding, and many people died. Um, and that's a very rough story because I don't know the whole, you know, after all these years, the stories twist and turn. But that is what we have in America and the world. Acts chapter 4, verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other. Stay in Romans 10, if you would. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The only name that saves people is Jesus. Not Catholic, not Baptist, not Mormon, not Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Methodist, Unitarian, Ukrainian, whatever. I don't know what. Jesus saves. No one else. Not the Pope, not the priest, not the rabbi, not the pastor. Jesus saves. And uh, Buddhism, you know, to me, the, the Thailand story breaks my heart because the, the Buddhist people don't have any hope of heaven. Buddhist people feel like if they're really good, they'll be reincarnated as a better creature well what's better than us that's the arrogance of man you know i, I remember asking betty lopez because her family was buddhist i said i mean if you're a cockroach you could be reincarnated as a cocker spaniel i guess it's a step up but what could a person be reincarnated better as and you know buddhists don't have any hope 90 plus percent of that country literally no hope and you go to a Catholic world, at least they understand there's a Jesus and that he was virgin born and he died for our sins. He rose from the dead and there's heaven and hell. They think you get to heaven by being good. But at least they got the ball rolling. Buddhists don't have a clue. Not a clue. And Johnny's, raise your hand, Johnny. It's just if you haven't got to talk to Johnny. Um, any idea when you're leaving yet, John? Next week. Hopefully leaving. John and Brittany were supposed to already be back in Thailand, but with some health issues have hindered that. But pray for them as they travel but uh, John and Brittany have been in Thailand already for a while and and, and the people are not closed right John no. people are open to the gospel you know because they know Buddhism has no hope it's stupid Americans who try to discourage their own believers from going to the world and giving them the gospel and uh, so look there if you would at Romans 10 just for a moment I'll just be a minute or two and we're going to close but in Romans chapter 10 it looks, um, if you look down at um, verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not whosoever joins the church, not so, whosoever is good or gets baptized or joins uh, some religious denomination. It's the Lord that saves. Your faith in the Lord. The thief on the cross was dying. The last moments of his life, G he said to, the, to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And the crowd of people says, oh, you just can't meet someone and get them saved right then. Tell that to the thief and to the Savior. Uh, simple as that. Uh, the Ethiopian uh, Jewish man, Ethiopian man that came all the way from Ethiopia to Jerusalem to worship. Philip catches him on the way out of town, jumps in the taxi with him. It was a chariot. Uh, he's reading Isaiah. He said, uh, under, do you understand what you read? He said, how can I except some man should guide me? And Philip started there in Isaiah and preached unto him Jesus. Because Jesus saves. They came by a pond, a river, a lake, whatever it was. He said, see, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? It's all in Acts chapter 8. Philip said, if thou believest. And he said, I believe Jesus is the Christ. And he went into the water and got baptized. Baptism, underwater, always has been, always will be. The word baptized means to immerse. Um, baptize him. Um, didn't, how, how many days did he spend discipling the guy? He was at the chariot. It was just between the AM, PM, and the next Circle K. <laughs> the guy gets saved and baptized. He didn't have any deacon's approval on his baptism either. Got saved, put his faith in Christ, got dunked. Simple as that. So Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14, How then shall they call, upon him, call on him in whom they have not believed? They got a problem. If they don't believe, then how shall they, in the middle of verse 14, how shall they believe in him of whom they've not heard? 
And how shall they hear without a preacher? Don't lose your place. The great need. Somebody's got to go preach. And that's not just the pastor. Uh, Brother, Brother George, you're, where your parents in the, the um, Owens are, if I brought 50 people down who could teach Sunday school, do electrical work, do carpentry work, type, work on a radio station, could they all go to work full time? You don't have to be the preacher. How about, could you use a music teacher? Somebody who just go down and teach music. You say, I don't know if I could be a missionary. You've never been with us, but if you know an instrument and you go with us to the Philippines, you will be surrounded by young people wanting to learn to sing and play anything. And they'll not leave you alone. They'll stay up all night with you. I mean, they'll stay up all night playing weird games with you. I walked in with our kids that stayed with their kids, our college students, teens, their college students, teens. We were out doing whatever, probably preaching while they were playing. They come in, there's charcoal marks all over their face. <laughs> Remember that, Ms. Mowry? What were they playing? Was it Jenga, Brian? Every, whoever pulls the thing and knocks the Jenga down, everybody else in the group gets to put their finger in the fireplace and put a charcoal mark on your face. <laughs> that adds some bite to the game. And these young people love to be around God's people. Don't think the missionary is the guy preaching. The missionary is the person teaching in the Christian school. The missionary is the person teaching in the Bible college. And there are young people in every country in the world who would sit in a Bible college and learn the gospel so they could go preach. But read that verse 14 again. How shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 15 is where we are. How shall they preach except they be sent? And what we're doing with our families that are here is we're doing some sending. Now, they probably all have a sending church. But we're a part of the sending here. And how are these countries going to hear if we don't send them? By the way, young people that are here and adults that are here. You should consider, would God use you? I don't think there's a mission conference we've had. Maybe there is. I don't think there's been. When I don't just remind God, just let me know. You know, you want a 64-year-old guy? Here, my Lord, send me. And I can't go as fast or as long. And I don't like Thai food. (laughs) I do like Mexican food, (laughs) but I love the Philippines, but I do not eat fish eyes and, uh, or fish heads. Fish to me is long John silvers, breaded and deep fried. (laughs) Rick Martin been in the Philippines over 40 years. He said his first year in the Philippines, he would have died of starvation were it not for Pizza Hut. He said he hated Filipino food. He didn't like fish. He didn't like rice. There was nothing the Filipinos ate that he liked. That was 40 plus years ago. Uh, How shall they hear without a preacher? But how shall they preach except they be sent? And how beautiful, verse 15, are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. You know what the gospel we're bringing? We're bringing peace. Not peace on earth. Earth's never going to have peace till Jesus comes. Peace with God. Peace knowing my sins are forgiven, knowing God's not angry with me. Those poor Thai people uh, lighting candles, hoping that some deity somewhere will have mercy on them. My God already had mercy on me. When he sent his son to die for my sins, that's mercy. When I called on him to save me in 1975, that's mercy. I'm on my way to heaven, mercy. Now I try to live for him just because he deserves the very best I can give him. And we have a wonderful God. If you're not saved, you ought to get saved. If you're saved, you ought to do something to invest your life in eternity. Let's pray. Father, bless us. Thank you for these great testimonies. And uh, we pray that among our young people and among our adults, our hearts would be touched for 7 billion people most of whom have never even heard the name of Jesus. And, and how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear except 
there be a preacher and how shall they preach except they be sent so i pray lord if there's someone here this morning not saved you'd help them get saved today and if there's some who are saved who've not yet surrendered their life to you to, for whatever you want i pray lord you'd help them um, give them that peace that passes all understanding in jesus name amen let's stand for a moment with our heads